Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Okay, we're back. We're live. It's it's Monday morning <laughs> with Andrea Flagg, and uh, she is the Associate Director of Biomedical Research at the Queen's Medical Center. Uh, and she was also for a few years, and she still is on the board of the Hawaii Academy of Science, but for also for a few years, she was the chair of the board of the Hawaii um, Academy for Science, which is a very important organization, which is what we're here about to talk about today. Andrea, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me again, Jay. Always so, a pleasure. <laughs> so nice to see you. So um, here we are, and we're getting very close to the actual fair, the Hawaii State um, Science and Engineering Fair. That's right. It's one of the most important things that happens in our state. We cannot lose sight of it for one minute, and it is organized by the Hawaii Academy of Science. Yes. So tell us the news about the fair. Well, the news is that uh, we have evolved over time, uh, and we'll talk probably a little bit about the change in, in how we have, you know, everything is change, right? I mean, the one certainty in life is change, and so we had to change with the times uh, from a more academic-oriented uh, uh, science fair, I mean, uh, 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 organization to a very more business-like uh, run organization. And the news really is that, that we are getting better and better every year. Uh, it, the streamlining and the students and the, the, the amount of awards that we get in international uh, science and engineering fairs is, is just really, really pleasing. And the community support that we have, uh, and we'll talk about that, I assume, today a little bit, very heartening, very heartening. And uh, so we are now, we, we will have very soon the, the 61st Hawaii State Science and Engineering Fair. So we have been in business since 1958. And uh, that is really exciting. Can you imagine, like, uh, uninterrupted service uh, to our students that, that want to learn about science and show off their, their prowess? Yeah, and there's a, certain, there's a certain continuum involved, because when some student gets involved in, in the fair in the first year, mm -hmm. the chances are pretty good he's going to be involved or she, in the second, third, fourth, right through school, because it expand, it covers a bunch of school years for, for kids. And so the result is it, it, it'll sort of dominate his thinking or her thinking for several years of his schooling here in Hawaii. That's right. And the, the other nice thing is that the students get exposed to, you know, they don't just stick, for example, with uh, engineering. There are 22 categories in, in, this, in the fair, and they range from engineering to, to math to cell molecular biology, uh, uh, what have you, and the students, they can go to different uh, uh, fields. They don't stick necessarily all to engineering. Even if they're maybe very talented in that area, they, they venture out to other areas, and that makes them more complete, more rounded. They get exposed to the challenges, and they actually, it's more like a, uh, maybe like a uh, finding yourself what you want to do when you grow up kind yeah. of thing. You know? That's always a big question. I mean, we, when we go around, and we will go around, was it March 28th? Yes. March 28th mm -hmm. at the convention center, mm -hmm. and it, it goes for two or three days. And yes. How does that work? Uh, so basically, uh, we have a day of setup where the posters. So basically, what the we'll talk about this probably also a bit more about the the science fair is a poster-oriented uh, venue. So basically, the students just like the big boys. Exactly. You go to these science conferences, it's all poster-oriented, big posters. Exactly. And these kids make big posters, too. Yes. Even bigger, these Even kids. Even bigger. You know, they're, they're like, okay, because there's, okay, instructions how to make the posters, you know, and so they follow the instructions because that's what is di dictated by uh, the belonging to International Science and Engineering Fair. Uh, yeah, so they, they present and... Uh, uh, they build up, they, they, they put together their posters, and then the next day the judging happens. And so we have the fortune to have over 100 judges that help us out. We could, the Hawaii Academy of Science organizes these things, but without our community, we would be nothing. Sure. So, so the judges come in, there's a junior class, there's a senior class, and then uh, they, they come in and they go to, the, they have assigned posters, and then afterwards they meet and then they discuss the posters and they select who should be first, second, third, and so on. Um, and the students, of course, they're, they're nail-biting. They're going, oh, where am I? Yeah. But they're also having fun, you know. Uh, Jay, you, you have made a lot of videos with them, and, and you can see oh, yeah. the palpative 
excitement that they that comes across. Yeah, yeah. and they love it. It's a social experience too. Oh yes. You know what they say? Science isn't about science; it's about relationships. <laughs> exactly, like anything in the world, right? <laughs> <laughs> like everything in the world. Yeah, I, I so enjoy talking to them. You know why? Because. They're, they're collaborating on yes. these projects. There's not one, you know, sometimes there's one person who did mm -hmm. the poster and has the project, but more often than not, it's two or three, and they're now they're buddies for life, for life they're buddies, mm -hmm. and, and when they talk to you, it's all scoped out, so they know what they're gonna say, yeah. and all of a sudden, these kids who you think would be quiet and reserved, no, 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 they know exactly what they wanna tell you. Yes, <laughs> and you see the ones, you know, they're, they're so, thinkers and they think a lot and they, they, the social interaction is, is different. N not wrong, just different. And then, you know, they come to, to, the, to the, any science fair and they, they stand there in front of the poster and there's a poster next to them and there's a poster on the other side and the judges are not always around. So they start talking to each other. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, that's interesting. You know, oh, what do you? Oh, okay. Oh, you know, and so the, the social network builds and yeah. then they come back the next year and the next yeah. year. And it's not for winning purposes. Winning is nice. I mean, let's admit it. However, the bigger picture is really the, the social contacts and, and the intellectual stimulation and the, 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 the excitement that goes around. And meeting people of like mind. I mean, it must be such a kick for a kid, you know, from one neighborhood uh, to meet some kids who are doing projects from another island who, yes. you know, he's never met them. Right. And now he's going to meet them and he finds, yes, there are people who resonate in science, and they're just as dedicated to science and a future in science as I am. That must be so exciting for them. And in particular, oh, it's not about all oh, math, for example. You know, uh, oh, art is, imp we don't have art in there yet. Or actually, we do with uh, the Chevron uh, <laughs> uh, Art Award. But, but it's, it's not just about what I do. There, there's so many pus pieces of the puzzle all around, you know, and, and it all fits together. Biology, for example, my, my field. Well, without chemistry, without physics, without math, well, where would biology be, right? You know, I wanted to ask you a question. You know, I mean, you know, question. You put a lot of time into this. You've been on the board for as long as I've known the board. Really, that's right, I mean, you're a fixture there, <laughs> and, and um, you're a scientist. Yes. And look, everybody, look, scientist. <laughs> Me. Okay, that's, and not only that, but you're an entrepreneur scientist, which is the best kind. And we had a show before mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, and we explored, right. you know, your your company with your husband, it was really amazing. Um, so here you are, um, dedicated to STEM science, you know, technology, what do you call it, engineering. And, um, and you're, you're on the floor there, undoubtedly you act as a judge in all of these things, yeah? I have not been as a judge because- You're an administrator. I, yes. Okay. I have, you know, there's so much time that you have, of course. right? Yes. So you're, you're walking around the floor, you're talking yes. to these kids, mm -hmm. and you see it through the eyes of the Associate Director of Biomedical Research at the Queens Medical Center. Mm -hmm. Now that's really something else, but you're interested and, you know, my reaction, and I'm not a scientist by any means, but I'm, I'm an appreciator. <laughs> <laughs> when I go to the science fair, I get so thrilled to hear them talk about their science. They talk about medical science, I remember a couple times talking to these kids, they were like mm, 15 or 16 mm -hmm. years old, mm -hmm. and they're talking about curing cancer, and they're serious about it. Yes. And they know all the nomenclature and the acronyms, they know all the latest work yes. in the art and science of it, and they say, wow, I wonder if you have that reaction too. I do, and I can tell you, some of the titles of these posters, I go, that's a tongue twister. I can't even pronounce that, you know? <laughs> what is this, you know? So, so it really uh, evokes my curiosity also. And the nice thing, the reality of things is, you know, why I got into this business is really because um, we need succession planning. And, and science is so important. Everything around us is built on science. It, you know, the technology and the knowledge doesn't come from out of the blue. Yeah. There, yeah. there is no Nuremberg that, you know, you yeah. put on and all the knowledge comes to the brain. <laughs> no, no. Well, you know, but winning, you mentioned winning, winning mm -hmm. does give you a certain, um, you know, uh, range of possibilities yes. in life. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the story um, that where I became aware of this was uh, when I met Neil Atabara, uh, who's an uh, ophthalmologist here in town. Mm -hmm. And he was in the science fair from Hilo with the boys from Hilo. Mm -hmm. And he wins. Yes. And he goes to the mainland and he's in the nationals. And all of a sudden he's got scholarships coming at him from left and right. 
and I forget what schools, but he went to the best schools on the mainland. Harvard. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. and, and then came back, and now he's a star ophthalmologist yes. and a big supporter of this and other science programs yes. in our community. Um, but, you know, the point is that it defined his life. It mm -hmm. defines his life today mm -hmm. that he participated in this program and that he went to the mainland on the basis of his success. Yes. And, he, and he's a, you know, he, he comes back and he gives back. He realizes this was so important for his career, and, and he wants the same for, for all the other kids uh, in Hawaii, uh, all the school districts, that they have the, the chance to, to do that if, if they want to. And, and there's many schools that are really, really supportive. For example, one of our programs is uh, a STEM award. Uh, we realized that while we were focusing on the students, which is great, I mean, that's fantastic. However, the schools should also be acknowledged. And so we created what's called a STEM award, and where we basically have 10 different um, scientific STEM-oriented groups here in Hawaii. Um, I, I have a cheat sheet here where I can read off it in a second. But they, they come together, and basically, if schools participate in, in the math bot, for example, or in Lego League, or something like that, or in, in the science fair, that counts certain points. And then the, the schools with the most programs get an award. And we have 200 schools participating in that in, in 2000. 700 students or something like that, maybe yeah, more. Maybe, maybe I'm more. getting it wrong. So something so over 700. For, yeah. for the science fair, is almost 4,000. Pardon me. On, oh, all you're talking the, about all statewide. All, this, all statewide. And the ones who are going to be at the convention center have won yes. at the district level, and now they're, yeah. they're at the top of the pyramid for the state. That's correct. But it, it reaches out to every place in the yes. state, every school. Every really. district. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Nine, the nine districts participate, yeah. schools. And, and we, so uh, we, we, it fluctuates a little bit how many students, but uh, uh, this year, uh, so 2017, actually, the statistics are about 4,000 students statewide, and then about 1,200 uh, district-wide, and then about 400 on the, on the science fair. It's and really then, re remarkable how many people, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I, I, and then 23 go off on to the international. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really remarkable what an effect this program has. There's no other, in my observation, there's no other program that is uh, such an incentive to kids to study science, such a reward to them, such a, a place of gathering for them to study science. It's because the, the program is, is based on mentors that are actually active, most of the time active in academia. Uh, we have also uh, scientifically oriented teachers who are really active, who, who take the students into the laboratory. Um, so it's, it's a mix between teachers and, and, and uh, academic researchers at the University of Hawaii, HPU. Um, yeah. Okay, I think it's time that we take a look at some of the notes you have on the table. What did you call them? Cheat sheets? That's yeah. okay. <laughs> but the first one I would like to hear about is the history mm -hmm. of the Hawaii Academy of Science, 1925. Five. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about it? So the uh, Hawaii Academy of Science was founded in 1925, and it was put together by, by several um, uh, existing um, uh, uh, academies. For example, the Hawaiian Medical Society, which was founded in, founded in 1895. The Hawaiian Engineering Association in, was founded in 1902. The Hawaiian Entomological Society and the Hawaiian Section of American Chemical Society were founded in 1923. And all those societies decided to found one in 1925. And the first board meeting was, uh, the first annual meeting was held in 1926. And so it was really, uh, it was an exchange, there were posters, there were presentations, and it was, it was the scientists who were talking and exchanging ideas. Because remember, we were in the we were in the middle of the ocean, right? And uh, the airplane was not that uh, affordable or not ex non-existent. And so, for until um, 1967 or so, th those annual meet meetings were held. And then, of course, air travel came along, and um, researchers had the opportunity to move go to the mainland to present their work. And so, the the attention shifted to supporting uh, the. Um, uh, succession, you know, yeah. which is the young, young people. Yeah. I think what's interesting about the 1925 origins of the Academy of Science is that that was roughly 10 years, well, 15 years, exactly 15 years after the establishment um, of the university. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Hawaii was growing up. Yes. Hawaii was a territory. It was a serious territory. There was some serious talent out here. There was some serious science out here. Mm -hmm. And it was the community feeling that Yes, they could engage in serious 
science and bring all those experts together and yes, this could be a place the world might be the path to. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there was a whole way of thinking that made the academy come together, I think. And people don't realize that many uh, substantial discoveries in the plant and botany were made here because Hawaii was heavily involved in uh, sugarcane, in pineapple, and so how do you protect? What do you do? What do you put in the soil? What's, what's harmony, harming the, the pineapple? Uh, makes a very interesting read on, on yeah. and they were so isolated. They had, they had nobody to rely on. And we on. did get to be expert in that exactly. area. Exactly. And that showed you that science could actually help you in, in business and mm -hmm. in, in all the activities around the state. Exactly. I, I get excited just thinking about that. And I'm, I regret the fact that the, the airplane changed <laughs> the nature of our scientific conversation here in Hawaii. <laughs> it has, but uh, you know, but with the science fair actually was started the year before statehood, 1958. Yeah. So. Okay, we come back from this break, Andrea. We'll, we'll talk some more about what the science fair, the Academy of Science is doing these days. Mm -hmm. It isn't just the fair, although the fair is the is a 1,600-pound gorilla here, right. <laughs> but it has other activities, and it reaches people in different ways, as you alluded to. We'll be right back after this short break. Hey, hey, baby, that's you. I want to know, will you watch my show? I hope you do. It's on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock, and it's out of the comfort zone, and I'll be your host, R.B. Kelly. See you there. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up, and please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. You know, sometimes we forget for a minute that science is our future here in Hawaii. We've got to keep up with it. We've got to train our kids about it, and we've got to try to hold them here so that they create scientific enterprises. And uh, Andrea Flank has been involved in doing this for, well, your whole career here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. She's the uh, Associate Director of Biomedical Research at the Queens Medical Center. And she's dedicated, she's a scientist. She's dedicated to the community. And I, I want you to know I really appreciate that. That Thank is special, you. yeah. And she has been a director, still is a director of the Academy of Science, Hawaii Academy of Science. And she was the president for chair for a while. And you can see that she cares deeply about it, that she comes and talks to us about it. <laughs> so talk to us about all the activities of the Hawaii Academy of Science these days, including, of course, uh, the science fair, but also the, the accessory type activities that are involved. The science fair, the state science fair, of course, is the biggest event, and it's the most obvious event. Uh, however, for those three days in a year, a lot of work goes in during the year. For example, uh, school support, district support, how to write a post or education, helping the teachers, uh, monetary support as far as we can, depending on our fundraising uh, efforts, uh, uh, results every year. So, so all of that goes in. It's, it's a humongous amount of work. The coordination of uh, over 100 judges, 70 volunteers, and, and all the parents that come along. Um, it culminates in, so the, the spin-off of the state science fair is the international um, and science and engineering fair. And that one is really special. It's called international, but it's always in the United States. So <laughs> it's international because everybody comes to the United States. This time, I think it's in Philadelphia in May. It's always in May. And, and some of our kids are going to be there, right? And they? 23 of our kids will be right, there. Okay. So, and the academy, uh, we support this uh, as much as we can. We go there, chaperones and all that needs to be organized. Um, and we are really lucky because we have really, every time we win, uh, last year, 2017, we had a first place winner in the cell molecular biology area. And you know, this is no cheap affair. Those kids, they rack up uh, dollars. Uh, you, you, because you just don't uh, not necessarily have one award. You can have two or three awards from different uh, companies, for example. And uh -huh. some kids walk away with 
five, six, seven thousand dollars. Yeah. And scholarships. And scholarships, exactly. Know, gosh knows yes. who, what that's worth, you know, exactly. your whole life there. Yeah. So in extension to the science fair, we also have the um, Pacific Symposium for Science and Sustainability, which started out uh, as a marine-oriented research symposium. Uh, the difference between the, the science fair and the PS3, as we say in shortcut, um, <laughs> is that with the PS3, the, the, the students, so the high school students and the juniors, they uh, present a, a talk on PowerPoint or Keynote or what have you um, instead of a poster. So it's a different challenge, if you wish. Is this within the science fair itself? No, that is a it's separate It's a separate event. procedure, a separate Correct. presentation. That is also organized by the Hawaii Academy of Science, and that usually happens in January. So we just had that. Uh -huh. It's about uh, 100 students come together from Hawaii and uh, from American Samoa and Pompeii. Oh, Pacific uh, Rim thing. Exactly. So this, uh, this, uh, this, is, this is probably going to get more and more popular because the issue is more and more important. Exactly. And you cannot ignore talent. <laughs> talent no, is no. everywhere. <laughs> and so you have to, and you know, but we try very hard to do that. We're supported uh, uh, by uh, NOAA through this and, and through um, other sources. Uh, 100, 100 students come every year. So it's a little small event, but it's, it, it's a very uh, work-intensive event. It's like uh, it's like SOAS. It's the ocean and earth science exactly. um, mm -hmm. issues, and uh, these kids uh, live in places, including Hawaii, where Correct. that's a great moment. And we better be thinking about ocean and earth science if exactly. we want to survive our, our uh, community. Right. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, as a community and in the world, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, climate change. There must be plenty of discussion. Of exactly. Climate change. Another another program that we have is um, the. Uh, STEM, uh, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematic Award. As you may have noticed, the PS3 and the Science Fair are focused on the students. However, the students need mentors and they need support from their environment. And what is their environment? It's the schools. So we have about 200 participating schools, and that was in 2016. The, this year's uh, numbers are still outstanding, so I'll I can refer you to the website hawaiiacademyofscience.org. You will find more information. It's a nonprofit corporation. Nonprofit corporation, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, and basically, what we really wanted to do is to say, schools, thank you so much. Uh, and 200 schools, on average, participate, and two different. So they're scored by how many STEM programs, extracurricular STEM programs, do they offer? And 10 different uh, extracurricular organizations here in Hawaii participate in it. And then there's a score, and then we give the award. Uh, and then the final, we have more like an outreach that is collaboration with uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Gareth Wynne Williams, who has been since 2009. Uh, 2009, that was a German word, noin. <laughs> I'm German originally, right? So some words. I got it. I got it from my Yiddish, I know. There we go. <laughs> um, so Gareth really has been wonderful in organizing the Hawaii, uh, the Honolulu Science Cafe. And the Honolulu Science Cafe approaches more the adult or the, 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 the person who really wants to know more about science. And uh, different speakers coming, different researchers, experts in their fields, and present their work to uh, people who are interested, and it's usually a very casual affair. And over a meal. Over a meal, yes. And it, it originates from, from France, actually. Uh, the Café Scientifique. Uh, uh, okay, okay. It, and same idea, right? So that's how it has spread out. I, I love that idea. It's a great idea. We go down there and videotape them once in a while. Uh, every mm -hmm. couple months we go, depending on what they're doing. And then we play that on uh, OC16 as one of our OC16 feature shows. So we like going down to the Science Café. But they moved. Uh, they were in yes. Kaimu Key, uh, mm -hmm. and I guess the place wasn't big enough for them. That and was good. It was too small. You know, more people, there's more interest. That's wonderful. It's growing. So now they are at the Hazar Bistro. Is that the right? H-A-S-R, Hazar. H Hazar, yeah, yeah H-A-S-R. It's right here downtown on mm -hmm. uh, Pawahi Street. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. And that seems to be uh, working out well so far. So, I mean, you've outlined a, a bunch of things, uh, Andrea, about how people who are not necessarily kids, who want to you know, see this phenomenon, mm -hmm. this, this the growth of our kids, and hopefully the growth of the, you know, the community of science in Hawaii. Um, want to see it, be part of it, 
uh, help it out. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously you can go to the website, Hawaii uh, Academy of, was it, Hawaii Academy of Science mm -hmm. um, and they can participate in some of these things. Uh, I think one, one thing it presents, I don't know if it's too late or what, but if you're starting the uh, science fair, the mm -hmm. statewide science fair, um, uh, in uh, well, just, a, just a few days, yeah. 28th, mm -hmm. uh, which is a Wednesday week, Wednesday right. week at the convention center, is it possible for me to become a judge? Absolutely. Yeah? We are always looking for judges. Uh, the more, the merrier. Um, and any time... Do I have to be a scientist? No, you don't have to be a scientist. You, have, you, you should be a person interested in science, obviously, right? But otherwise, there's, there's no prerequisites. If you're interested in, in helping kids, uh, mentor kids, in a sense, for those five, ten minutes that you are at the poster, or learn more about what, what our, our students do, absolutely. Yeah. Anybody can come. Now, I suppose uh, I don't have the time to be a judge. I mean, I'm, but I still love to be, love to see what's happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm reminded I need to tell you this one story about the woman, the young girl with the triangles. I don't know if you remember that, but uh, we, we were both on the board mm -hmm. at the time this happened. She was in um, the school up the street here, uh, the Priory. Okay. And she was from Taiwan originally. A lot of diversity in the in Very, the science yes. fair. Mm -hmm. And she was studying triangles. And, uh, and somebody told me, somebody who taught at one of the other schools, Shamanan, I think, was there as a judge. And he said, you've got to go see this woman with the triangles. <laughs> triangles? What could be a, you know, so interesting about triangles? Right. Well, <clears throat> I went down the back end there, and there was, she was demonstrating with her poster mm -hmm. about the triangles. She was brilliant, brilliant. And she talked so fast. And she was talking about triangles. And then I realized from the poster that they had invented a triangle for her. Oh. Her name. The, the National whatever Academy, yeah. maybe it was the Academy of Science National. They had, they had actually named a triangle after this 15-year-old kid. How cool is that? It's amazing. That How is cool amazing. is that here yes. in Hawaii? Yes. That's, you know, that's world class. And we, you know, so question is, can I, as an observer who wants to see like the girl with the triangles, mm -hmm. like a movie. Uh, <laughs> um, can I go? Can yes. I see? Can I walk in on this? We have, after the judging is done, uh, we have an afternoon where the public is invited. Anybody can come, walk in, uh, see what the kids are doing. The kids are still there, so they, they will answer questions. But the judging is over. So we have a closed session during the judging, obviously, because we want the the students to be able to concentrate. But yes, it's open. There, there's an open session, um, and it, it's posted on our website when exactly what the program is. No charge. No charge. All Very free. nice. Yes. And yes. you'll have a program, too, where the VIPs will speak and try yes. to put all this together for us. We, we always try to have, uh, uh, you know, I don't want to single anybody out, but we do have great entrepreneurs that speak. Motivationally, we have uh, people from business, we have people from academia, we have people from uh, uh, who are engaged with from, from the uh, state legislature who help. The governor has always, uh, most of the time, has had time to, sp has given his time or her time to, to speak at those events. So it, it's, it's a big affair. Yeah. Well, I, 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 saw, I spoke for you before when I suggested that you as a scientist you know, you had a sort of native interest in all this. But I would like to hear it from you, actually, Andrea. How do you feel about the science fair? How do you feel about the connection between this phenomenon of kids doing science and the future of the state? Can you, can you put that in your own words for me? When I came to Hawaii to, to uh, build my, my lab, I realized that one of the most important things here in Hawaii, because we are a, a, a tight-knit small community, um, we need succession planning. And so, to be honest, I was kind of selfish in a sense, you know, uh, that I said, oh, what do I do about it? And I stumbled upon the Hawaii Academy of Science. And so I, I started out mentoring students. So I've had, um, I don't know how many high school students in my lab actually doing research side by side with me. Uh, That's great. I, I, I was their mentor, and then they would present the poster, and I would root for them, and I would go, okay, this is fantastic. I did that for, for uh, 10 years or so. And then um, I started, okay, now it's time to perhaps become more involved on the uh, administrative side and, and my, bring my knowledge in that way. 
and that worked out really well as well. So we, we still do, if we can, we still have summer internships um, in the lab. I'm not so much in the lab anymore, uh, so, but I love to see the, the enthusiasm of the kids. And sometimes it's just like, how do I do this? And then <laughs> you, know, you talk to them, and then the light comes on. You, you can see it. When they, when they realize, oh, I get it. I, I understand what she said. I get it. And, and you can see it in the eyes, and then you go, my job is done here. <laughs> you know, and that is really a, a wonderful thing. Um, and I want to continue that as much as I can. I know you do. And the one thought that strikes me here at the end of our show is that science is, appeals to kids of all ages. Yes. Of all ages. Mm -hmm. And in a way, you are a kid, just like those kids on the floor of the science fair. And so am I, Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> it's if you would have told me uh, 50, no, no, that was too long, 40 years ago that I would get paid to be a perpetuate, perpetuate student, I would have said, nah. That's what it is. That's what a scientist is. You, you have to keep learning, have to keep learning. You can't stop no matter what your yeah, age. You start young, you, you never stop. It's wonderful to have that in Hawaii. Yes. Thank you so much, Andrea. Thank you. Lovely to see you. Thanks for coming down. Thank you, Jay. Thank